Join us now for more to talk about uh, the big market catalysts and what's working for investors. Drew Mattis, chief market strategist at MetLife Investment Management, and David Bonson, founder and CIO uh, at the Bonson Group. Um, we didn't make a, 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 a picture of, of this S&P year-over-year percent change that you had that you furnished to us, but I like it, and, I, and I, I'm going to describe it, and then you tell me what, what it's telling us. And that is, it shows in the third and fourth quarter of, of 2018, huge year-over-year gains, almost 30 percent one quarter, 17 percent the next quarter at the end of 18. For all of 2019, we almost flatlined. Mm-hmm. We flatlined at the same level as those really big gains. Now for next year, you're looking at 9% first quarter, 9.1% second quarter, 14% in the third quarter for earnings per share year over year. So it almost looks like they're re-accelerating from what was already a pretty high level. So are you saying this is bullish or not bullish? Well, I'm saying it's what the analyst consensus expectations are for next year. And so therefore, if it doesn't happen, you ha- bulls will need a new thesis. The thesis requires you to believe earnings are going to accelerate. Yeah, I believed this and thought it was bullish. So you're telling me that there's a, it sets up no, the market. No, I do think it's bullish because I do think. It sets up the market for disappointment? I think it does set up the market for disappointment if things come back from that. What would make them come back from that is if you don't get a trade war done, if this CapEx deceleration is legitimate, if it's lasting. But I am bullish in the sense that I think there are certain pockets of value there that are still going to benefit. But no, I think that, that the, the chart that we don't have up on the screen but that we're talking about really shows how markets discount in advance the reality of earnings. We'll take a shot of, of you talking to me again. Matt, can you lower this guy's chair, please? I, I, mean, I mean, okay, you're like talking down to me like I'm, uh, look at this. I mean, uh, all I can say is yes, sir, no, sir. Come on, Matt, can we... Yes. How's that? There we go. I, th- I feel right sized. Oh, now. almighty. Lower. Uh, huh? I think you want everybody, you want all the guests uh, to be lower. That's what I'd like. That I know you, you want all that. the guests to be lower. But I, I, thought, we we gonna, wait, I thought we were going to grow the pie. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting here talking about earnings acceleration and he's shrinking me in the chair. I don't know what that says Wealth for 2020. Wealth redistribution. Exactly. But that, I, I think that the, the bottom line answer, Joe, is that the market right now has priced in a lot of very good news. Yep. And the news is not likely to get better than the good news it's priced in. And it could be worse. So I think there's asymmetrical risk. David, reward. really quick. What about positioning, though? I hear what you're saying, but the investors are completely, in my opinion, underweight stocks. All the flows have, have gone into bonds. Uh, from a positioning standpoint and a psychological standpoint, it seems to me that there's a lot of bad news priced in. Yeah, I think I think that there is a sentiment issue. The people are still afraid of a shoe dropping, and that give, gives you the ability for markets to continue kind of advancing when that shoe doesn't drop. Which shoe? Is it the first shoe or is it... The, well, another shoe drop. I, I think that the trade war issue kind of has changed everything because all of a sudden it just gave people an excuse to not to have that uncertainty thesis. It lingers, and and certainly we see it in the C-suite businesses okay. holding back in both confidence and expenditures. But it's also uh, the multiples. You've never seen this delta between valuation and value and growth, and I don't really like that breakdown. I'm just using it because it's convenient. We want companies that are growing that are out of value. I don't see those things as uh, uh, binary, but to us, the dividend growers are where you can pick a okay. spot and not have excessive value. How's the world looking to you? I, or, 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 this I mean, if the consumer looks great, so the world looks great. Uh, and that, as far as I'm concerned, you know, if you look sense? at trade, you look at Brexit, we're starting to get some resolution in those issues. And it doesn't even have to be a good resolution. We just have to know what the new rules of the game are. And then people can price that in and they can figure out where they're going. The problem is you can't price in a lot of these risks now. Because you just don't know. There's so many different ways that they could they could work out. And so, as long as we get resolution in these issues, you know, then that'll be a positive. And if the consumer stays in the ball game, the U.S. economy is not going anywhere, but but you know, somewhere good. What do you think about rates? What's your view on rates? Uh, I mean, our, my view on rates is that rates should be moving higher. Uh, but they, sh- you know, I mean, by any definition, they should be moving higher. There's just no reason they should be as low as they are. The Fed probably shouldn't be cutting rates right now, in my opinion. Um, you think they will, though, this month? I, I think they will. But, you know, we're 20 basis points away from their target for inflation, and we're cutting rates, and the unemployment rate's 3.5%. I mean, I, I, that makes me nervous. I'm not sure if it makes anyone else nervous. Um, but I, I do think, you know, it, the lower rate environment isn't helping. It's actually hurting. It's causing people to save more money, not less. Uh, it's keeping companies in business that shouldn't be in business. That's keeping people working at firms where they shouldn't be working and keeping productivity lower and wages lower. So 
everything that low wages do that's negative or low interest rates do that's negative actually makes you then believe you need to lower rates further in order to fix it. And that's how you get into the situation Japan got into and, and the Eurozone seems to be uh, in. Kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah, that's you want people to think, all right, I don't need to be really worried. I can go get this job with higher wages. Otherwise, you don't see the wage increase that, that you're looking for. But I, I still don't. It, it almost sounded, if you're that worried about the Fed cutting, it sounds like you're going back to the days when we worried about inflation. And I still don't think it, we're not worrying about some type of inflationary spiral right I now. I wouldn't be worrying about inflation. Uh, I'm not worried about inflation. You're worried about the absolute, effect on I'm, savers? I'm about, everyone else thinks there's no inflation. Right? And if you, if you talk to people, they're like, inflation's dead. Right. Inflation's 20 basis points below the Fed's target. All right, but, I mean, but, you know, in any other Federal Reserve, the, the Federal Reserve people would have been out saying, we're hitting our target, we're done. Like we're well, in any other Federal Reserve, they also weren't targeting to even have 2% to begin with. There was a time where we actually thought not having inflation was sort of the point of yeah. sound money. And, and so I agree it isn't the inflationary it's, issue, but the malinvestment that gets created. That's what I was wondering, yeah. if you're talking about that, because we've had 10 years of trying to engender some inflation with QE infinity wow. and, and low interest rate. We're still 20 basis points below. Does it seem like there's a structural it, inflation it problem? Well, QE infinity and negative interest rates and all those things. Work. Right, but uh, people that thought debasing the currency was going to result in hyperinflation were on the wrong side, right? We know that now, don't we? Absolutely. Okay. Clear as can be. So uh, you send me all this really good stuff and then it's, see, it's not going to happen. I mean, that, I didn't, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, I think that the... That I brought earnings, you down to the yeah, level, to, though, to, didn't to where I? the earnings are. Well, no, I think that the earnings of 2020 are going to largely depend on how the trade war gets settled. And then we'll also see the election. That's going to be a big did story. Did he put himself up, Mac? Do you know? Did you notice did he did that before? Or did it's way out of my pay grade. I couldn't figure out that chair. Okay. All right. Thank you, David. Thanks, Drew. Thank you.